I'm from Zanesville, Ohio, if any of you guys are familiar with Zanesville. <laughs> I got some people, right? And uh, our high school never had theater, so I never had a theater class. And my dad, some of you guys may know, uh, he, he has his PhD, he worked at a technical college, and my mom was a licensed practitioner, a clinical counselor, and I go to the University of Kentucky. I don't know if we have any UK fans here. Two. Good. <laughs> we got two, right? So I go to UK. And I think I'm going to be a lawyer, right? I'm thinking a pre-law is going to be my destiny, make my parents proud. In my sophomore year, I take an acting class, acting ensemble with Marlon Bailey. It's an elective, purely for fun, right? Pretty cool class. I take another one with him in the spring, and then he casts me in a play, but still thinking pre-law. The summer comes, I'm in Zanesville, and I switch from pre-law to a theater major. My mom and dad were thrilled, <laughs> right? Their son's a theater major, right? I go out to LA for seven years, I'm in Los Angeles, and I'd like to show you guys one short clip from She's All That. Do you guys remember the movie She's All That? <laughs> Freddie Prince Jr., Paul Walker. It's a short scene with Paul Walker right before Usher comes out at the end of the movie, and this is my claim to fame. All I ask, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys are watching the screen. It goes quickly. <laughs> seven years of work up on the big screen. And that's it. <laughs> You don't know whether to clap or to boo. <laughs> I go back to Zanesville. My dad's a pretty conservative man. He looks at me. He, he's drinking some coffee. He goes, Chad, I spent $80,000 on that. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> my big idea, the unscripted moments in life, that's what defines us. The unscripted moments in life define us. Our ability to improvise, right? Get off the script of life. And let me explain. I think as children, right, as kids, Kids improvise all day, right? If any of you guys have kids or around kids, you know, my wife and I have a baby, Scarlett, and no two days are alike. She gets up at eight one day, nine one day, goes to bed at nine one night, 10 one night, right? Her whole day is completely improvised. And my wife tells a story better than I, but she was actually at John Barry, and she goes up to this little boy, this is like a week ago, goes up to this little boy, grabs his face, and gives him a little kiss. Unscripted, right? Maybe a wife for my, a heart attack for my wife, but unscripted, right? And then I think as we become teens, and I know I have a lot of teens in here, I think teens have a pretty good balance. I think teens have a scripted part of their day where they go to school, come home, do activities, right? But I still feel like teens can get off the script of life, right? They can go to a movie on a Monday night, they can go to Chicago on a weekend, right? Teens kind of have a balance in between the two. And then for a lot of us as adults, I feel like it's get up, go to work, come home, go to bed, right? We get in this routine where everything's scripted and our ability to improvise and get off the script and be dynamic and think different, right? I think it's stifled. And if you guys would look up here, if you guys are looking at it this way, on the left you got Tina Fey, in the middle you got Keenan, and on the right you got Amy Poehler, right? Two of those actresses, Tina and Amy, are from the Groundlings. When I was in Los Angeles, I started at the Groundlings, and the principal I want to share with you guys about this unscripted moment in life they told us is say yes and. It's the yes and principle. If you ladies and gentlemen watch Saturday Night Live tonight, I promise you on less than one hand, you'll hear the word no. On less than one hand. It'll be a 48 minute episode out of 60 minutes. And please watch it tonight, hold me accountable. Less than one hand, you'll hear no. Because I feel once you and I start saying no in life, to opportunities, to people, to places and things, right? That's what kills the creative process. That's why these masters, right? Tina, Amy, and Keenan, when they're doing sketches, they're saying yes and, they're just building off each other. Just keep that in mind if you would. Okay, so how do we have unscripted moments? A fair question, right? People ask me that. Think about personal life. How can you and I have an uh, unscripted moment, right? That defines us. Here's my example. Back in Zanesville, we're going back into the woods. My mom's uh, surprising me for my birthday. We go back into the woods. We drive up the steep driveway, and on the side of the house is a cage. And I take my sunglasses off. I'm looking around. Sun-drenched day. I'm like, something's moving in that cage. It was a bear. There was a freaking bear in the cage. And my mom and I get out. My mom looks at me. She goes, Chad, you want to get in the cage with a bear? <laughs> I'm like, heck no. All right? But in my mind, I swear to you guys, it went through my mind. The yes and. I said, yeah, let's do it. My mom kind of has, my mom has a great spirit. She loves that fun. So my mom and I get in the cage. The bear is a baby bear, about 225 pounds. It's a baby. It comes down to the first platform. There's four of us in there. My mom and I and the two owners. And the, I, here's, the, here's the moment I always remember. The bear's going by me. And I don't know if you guys have ever touched a wild animal like a bear in a cage. And I touch the back of his fur. And like my hairs on my back stand up. 
And I'm like, I'm in his domain. It's just a powerful thing. And then, right, the bear goes back up and the four of us leave. But a question all of us have to ask ourselves right in here, how many of you and I would have said no to get in the cage with the brown bear? Right? There's no right or wrong, but it's just how many moments do you and I have in, the, in life right, with a loved one, a parent, a grandparent, a boyfriend, a girlfriend? Right? How many times do you and I say yes and go into that cage? And your cage could be completely different. It doesn't matter what the cage is. It's the mindset. It's that unscripted moment. And then professionally speaking, right, you guys all know this man. He's over you, Steve Jobs. But I want to say something most people don't know. He gets fired from Apple, he goes to Pixar. He has all the bathrooms built in the middle of the atrium at Pixar, all of them. So that men and women from engineering, animation, accounting, any department had to co-mingle and bounce ideas off each other. He ended up calling it unplanned collaborations. And some of the greatest inventions came from those unplanned collaborations. This is what he later says, remember, right? And one of the ones behind me, the MacBook, came on like a Tuesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's partly why I think companies struggle so much with innovation. They're always on the script. Their whole day is planned out. Right? Companies that at least are strategic and leave a little bit of time to try new things, right? to bounce ideas off each other, I think those are the ones that advance. All right, now, it's a fair question, right? You could ask, what do these unscripted moments do for us? I think they do three things in our life. Number one, I think when you and I try something new, it gives us insights and awareness. My wife and I, two years ago, took a trip over, over to Italy. We went to Rome. Anyone here been to Rome? Some of you guys, all right, very good, very good. So we go to Rome, and we're sitting in an alleyway. True story, right? My wife and I are sitting in an alleyway. The waiter comes up. He's a young man, 19, 20 years old, good-looking good kid. Comes up and speaks to me in English, asks me what I want. I tell him. He comes up to my wife. He speaks to her in Spanish, right? She's, they speak Spanish together. And then he goes back to his staff, and he speaks Italian. And it hits me in this unscripted moment. This gentleman is trilingual. 19-year-old man, right? Here I am, a grown adult. I know one language, English. <laughs> That's it. And just on a side note, ladies and gentlemen, I still only know one language. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> but it gives us insights and awareness about ourselves, right? When we go to new places and try new things, that's number one. Number two, I think the men and women that can have these unscripted moments in life tap into their passions and dreams. You know, and you guys know I went from pre-law to theater. But I think a lot of us box ourselves in, even if you're an accountant, a CPA, an engineer. For example, an accountant in Zanesville who does our taxes, he makes pens at night, right? So he's an accountant by day, makes pens at night. He say he learned the craft from his dad in the garage. So he makes pens. That's part of his passion, right? And then he passes the pens out to clients. It all comes full circle. And then the third thing I think these unscripted moments in life, when you and I say yes and, right, we embrace the experience, fun. I think fun. So you guys know about Scarlett, my wife. So we're in the kitchen. We live right over here in New Albany. And we're in the kitchen. It's a couple weeks ago. And the sun is setting, right? Right behind us. My wife loves to take pictures. So she goes out. She's snapping pictures. And Scarlett and I go up to the blind, hit the blind, and watch her take pictures as the sun sets. Totally unscripted, right? We never, it was never in our, our planner, Google Calendar. So we're watching the sunset. It lasts about 10 minutes. It looks like a ball of fire, right? I'm just like, how many days, weeks, and months do you and I miss things from nature, right? The sun setting, the moon rising, whatever, because it's not on our script. It's not in the plan. And finally, to close out, students. I'll talk to students first, or young people. Students, think about your life. Some of you guys going to college, is that fair to say? Some of you guys are going to college? Think about if you go to college, students, and you think you're going to be this major, right? Which is great. But you say you take a class that's completely different than the major you want to do. And what if you love it? What if it blows your mind? What if that's your hidden passion? Do you try it? Do you try another class or do you stay the course? And by no means, parents, am I telling them to abandon all your plans. <laughs> right? And it's a very important point, right? It's not about abandoning plans. It's about having the experience. That's what those improv actors do. They say yes and. Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, Lisa Kudrow, Will Ferrell, right? All those come from the ground leads. They do it for the experience. 
And then students, I promise you, if you want to be an accountant and you take an astronomy class and another astronomy class, you will be a better accountant. Right? You'll have a deeper understanding of mankind. You have a deeper understanding of where we come from because you allow the unscripted moment to happen. And professionals, I know I have a lot of professionals in here. I would ask you and I, how can we have unscripted moments? Think of the unplanned collaboration. Can you and I do something at work that's different than the norm, right? That's different than other companies or competitors where we allow idea generation to happen. Out of the box thinking, right? Or are we just gonna structure our whole day so there's not one minute where we can idea generate, right? Without one minute where we can do anything with our team other than what's on the plan. I think those are two different companies, two different cultures. One's a culture of innovation, the other one probably not so much. And lastly, the third thing, I challenge everyone in here and I challenge myself. All of us in here, anyone in this room, at TEDx New Albany today, sitting here before we go through those doors, right? Have an opportunity today, tonight, tomorrow, to have unplanned collaborations, to spend time with loved ones maybe we never would before, and most importantly to me, take in things that are off the script, like the sunset that's behind me. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. <laughs>